volcanic eruption begin to form inside of me and these words come out of my mouth right out and I said in the name of Jesus Christ I stood to my feet as the anointing of God came upon me and I did yell or scream they told us not to be nuts around Raymond <laughs> yeah, they told us we got good examples and I knew that they wouldn't understand so I didn't get into a, a large screaming fit but I stood up and I spoke with authority and I said in the name of Jesus Christ you foul spirit of death you take your hand off my baby right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and my son will live and not die and he will declare the works of the Lord the doctor looked up at me that was working frantically with him with about five nurses. The doctor had already called. Give me an injection. They were going to inject something right into his heart because they'd been trying everything they could. And him being a little baby, they couldn't do too much. And so he was laying there lifeless, laying there dead. It looked like there was no hope. And the doctor looked up and said, Dad, you're not even supposed to be here. I said, Doc, I said, you do what you know to do. And I said, let Daddy know what do what he's supposed to do. I said, my son going to live and not die. It seemed like eternity. As the ministers ticked off and ticked off and ticked off. Said, Brother Randy, what happened? I got stronger in faith. I got stronger in faith because I had the word from God. I said, my son will live and not die. And then all of a sudden, I seen the nurses started weeping and crying. And they looked up and they said, he, he's still with us. He's still with us. And life came back into his body. And I started praising God. And then I turned and I looked and the doctor said, well, don't get no hope. He's been gone so long. No oxygen's come to his brain. And certainly he had brain damage. I said, my son will run like a heart. He'll leap like a deer. And he'll jump like a gazelle. Stand and jump, son. In the name of Jesus Christ. Testimony. How do you get a testimony? 
testimony. You get a test, it brings a money, you put them together, and they're called testimony. Amen. <laughs> you get a test, you start moaning and groaning. You know, but my wife, I was going to tell you, her testimony is just the opposite of her. She had a good, godly granny that raised her. She was saved around five or six years old. Got baptized with the Holy Ghost, but the elders are speaking in other tongues about nine years old. Her daddy tells me this, he's still pastor today in Hawkinsville, Georgia. I believe 78 years old, is that right? 78 years old, because he can't retire. He's got to refire. But her daddy told me stories about her. When she was 10 years old, she was spinned down an aisle like a top, prophesying and laying hands on people. I'm telling you, she's got dignified, sanctified, fried, died, laid to the side, but I believe God will get the starch out of her again. My God. And she's going to come back. Amen. She's going to get that starch out because back in those days, brother, an old time Pentecostal and Pastor Hagin, Miss Annette Hagin, tell you, we didn't have health clubs and workout clubs. You might get them. You know what I mean? But you didn't need them. Because when you went to church, my God, you got a Holy Ghost workout. You talk about cardiovascular, you got a cardio, brother. I mean, I, they didn't have the nurseries and all the good things back then. Mom used to hem us up under the pew and keep us down there. You know what I mean? Because that was the only safe place in the church. I got to tell you, because when they got the shot. And I didn't tell you, we're coming back to these days. We've got a measure of glory. We've got a measure of running the Spirit. But there's a running in the Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> 